Hi, right, in this session, I'm going to show you how to use the month, day, and year functions. So what the month function does is it returns back the numerical value of the month. So January would be 1, February would be 2, and so on until you get to December, which will be 12. So let's say, for example, we have this date here. We put equal month. I'll just go ahead and tab that out to complete it. And then the serial number is basically the number that the Excel sees dates in. We can just go ahead and reference this date here, press return, and it's, give, it's going to give us back the ninth month of the year. So this will be to return back nine, the second one will return back one, and so on here, four and, and three, and et cetera. So I, if I double click this fill handle here, it's going to go ahead and fill out the formula below. So it's each of these references will change. Now that's for the month function. For the day function, it's pretty much the same. It, it, it returns back the numerical value of the day given a date. So if I type in equal day, it's going to return back, uh, if I select this serial number here, it's going to return back that day, which is 27. So the values are from 131. So if I press Enter, we'll give you back 27. The next one will give back 14, and etc. So let me go ahead and double click the fill handle to bring and copy that down. So let's say, for example, now we have this year function. So pretty much like the month or day function, it returns the year value based on a full date. So if I type in year, I'll go ahead and tab that and select this reference, press enter, it will return back 2010. And pretty much most of these, or all of these are 2010. So if I double click the fill handle down here, it will return back 2010 for everything. So how can we use any, any of these functions? Well, let's go and use the month function. Let's say, for example, uh, we have our months. This is January, February, March, and we have our corresponding numbers, 1, 2, and 3, and 4, etc. all the way when we get to December, and it's the 12th month of the year. What we can do is if we, ha if we have this set of data, let's just say we didn't, we didn't use day or, day or year, so I'm going to go ahead and just click that, right click and hide it so it doesn't show up here. So, so let's say, for example, we just use the, the month, and we want to kind of get a gauge of uh, how, many, how many times somebody visited something. Let's say that we are charted out the, the times that someone had visited something or somewhere or, or, or whatnot. So what we can do is based on the numerical value of that month, we can put it into a table here and chart it out. So what I can do is in this particular cell, I'm going to type equals count count if. So basically, I'm going to count based on this range, B12 and down. I'm going to select that and then press Control Shift down arrow. It will select that whole range from B2 to B24 at the end. I'm going to go ahead and press F4 to put a dollar sign in front of the letters, the letters and numbers because when I copy it down here, those will, this, those will stay static. They won't change. So what I'm saying is when I use the COUNTIF function is based on that range, I'm going to count the values in there based on a criteria. So it has to equal 1. So I'm going to count everything that says 1. So it's going to count this one. It's going to count, I don't think I have any other ones here. Let me go scroll down. So it's only going to count one time. So if I press enter, you'll see that it gives me a count of one. And I'll go ahead and double click it to bring it down. And now it's counted the different months. So this is based off of F3 here. This one is based off of F4. You'll notice since I don't have the dollar signs, the, the, when I copy it down, the, the values, the cell references move accordingly. But these cell references don't because I have the dollar signs in front of them. Let me go ahead and press escape to get out of this mode. So right now I can just take this range of cells from G2 to H14 and go ahead and insert a table. I'm going to insert a column table. And now I have a column table that kind of tells me where I see most of the activity, May and September. So it just gives you a nice visual, re visual representation of any activity. And that's because we had kind of pulled out the, the month here. Right? We've, we've taken, we've, we've added a month label here, and then we just kind of pulled it out here into this other table, and now we can chart it a little bit. So a little, little more of a, a, a longer way uh, of doing that, but here's an example of how we can use one of these functions, one of the month, day, and year functions. You can do this with the day function or the year function if you've had other data that you wanted to look at differently. But this is one way that we can use uh, this particular uh, date type of function in Excel. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.